Good evening and welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals December 15, 2022 meeting. The time being 7 o'clock p.m. Alexander Terenzio requests a special permit pursuant to the code of the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, Chapter 275 Zoning, Section 3.1.6, Table 3-1, Table of Uses, Use L5, <clears throat> to construct a detached 30-foot by 40-foot residential garage with a footprint of 1,200 square feet. The subject property is located at 83 Beat Street, Foxborough, Massachusetts, in the R40 Residential and Agricultural District. Is Mr. Terenzio here? Yep. You want to come up? Are you Alec? Yes, sir. Okay, before I let you begin, I have a disclosure to make. Uh, this is a disclosure of appearance of conflict of interest. Uh, which is required by General Laws Chapter 268, Section 23B3. Um, I'm a personal friend of one of the abutters to, um, to the subject property. Um, I've talked with him. He has absolutely no position on the matter. He's neither opposed nor in favor of it. And taking that into account, and I, I feel that I am able to sit on this matter without any, um, any conflict. So unless you have an issue, okay, no issue here? Okay. So as you can see, there are four of us here. Je that gentleman there, Mr. Brown. Um, Mr. Brown, Ms. Mellon, and I are the regular members of the board. Mr. Yegin and Ms. Ms. Brew are associate members. All of us participate, but only the three regular members, he, me, and this young lady here, will be the ones who are, vote, who are voting. <clears throat> and in order to approve your application, our vote must be unanimous. Okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Tell us what you want to do, and we'll ask you some questions. Uh, should I press this? Or, oh, it's all set. So my plan is to build a 30 by 40 foot uh, go detached garage at 83 Beach Street. Um, so what we did is we finished off both of the basement sides on the two units, uh, 83 and 85. So now it's like two townhouses as opposed to a raised ranch. And uh, we'd now like to use that garage as the basement storage, which we used at the property. <laughs> How, how high is the, um, the garage itself? Um, I can check on the plans. I know the interior height is going to be 12 feet. Um, but the plans should tell me how high. So I have five twelve pitch and then so let me see what that is. Well, let me ask you this. Does it exceed 21 feet from ground to? No, okay. definitely not 21 feet. Okay. And you're showing space for two vehicles, which would roughly be about 625 square feet. So you have roughly another 600 feet as storage area? Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Okay. Is um, above the level where the vehicles would be parked? Is there going to be a no here? Yes, so it would be uh, trusses. Do you know trusses? So it's exposed on attic space. Level right, 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 yeah. Be exposed. Yes, exposed. Okay. Yeah. It's slab on grade, I presume. Yep. No basements, right? No basement. Yep. Okay. And you're showing a uh, bathroom, correct? Yeah, but we're going to take that out as we were told. It's we're not allowed to have water connection. Okay. Dave, Kirk, go ahead with any questions. Um, I do have a few, uh, a few questions. So this is going to be visible from the street? Yes. Okay. 
And uh, will you occupy the residence? I will be at 83 Beach Street, yes. Okay, so you're okay. I'm sorry, you will be? Oh, yes, I'll be living at 83, and then 85 will be a tenant. Okay. Okay. And there's two units that you said. Um, do you, if we were to approve this, do you have any intention of using this for any uh, business use, commercial no. use? No. Okay. That is all I have for the moment. Dave, any questions? No. Um, <coughs> what, I have quite a bit of storage space, right? I heard storage hear space. That was Sorry. All. Dave, could you repeat that? Can you guys hear me all right? Slightly. Can you turn no. up your volume. Turn up my volume. Here we go. Great. How do I do that? Uh, Kurt, any questions? Is that better? Oh, wait. That better, he said. No. <clears throat> if it's helpful on the line, we can hear him fine. Is that better? Okay. No. It sounds kind of echoey. How about now? Is oh, that there you better? Go. That's, That's better, better, Dave. Okay, I figured it out. One more. How about that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> any, any questions? Um, that's quite a bit of uh, space for storage. What, what kind of things do you expect to store there? Uh, so I've flipped five houses now, uh, ranging from 1800s to 1900s. And every house I do, I keep as much lumber as I possibly can. So I have tons of 300-year-old lumber that I'd like to use eventually, you know, make some pieces of furniture for myself. But I have a lot of lumber that's all stored under tarps right now. I'd love to have in a garage. So the lumber is used towards other construction, flipping houses? Yeah, construction and then, you know, furniture pieces for myself, just miscellaneous, anything I can recycle it for. So it's part of, then it is part of a business. No, no not like, so it, I'd say more of a hobby. Oh. The, the furniture that you prepare. Yeah, hard. I haven't gotten to it yet, but eventually I'd like to make like a dining room table for my house and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So if you're, going to be manufacturing furniture, you're probably going to need, what, room for equipment to, to manufacture it? Well, I have that, yeah. I mean, wh where is that now? In my trailer, yeah. So it everything be, is just in my trailer now. Putting that, that in the garage? Uh, yeah. Does that run on single phase or two phase electric? Or? Single phase. Yeah, it's just the biggest is a table saw right now. And When you're flipping houses, you have employees? Uh, no. Subcontractors? Yes. And do they go directly to the jobs or do they come into you or how does that all work? What do you mean, do they come directly to me? Well, where do they report in the morning? Um, well, they just kind of, like, if they have their job, they go and do their job on whichever house we're on. Yeah, they don't really report to me. They kind of just have their job and do their job. And they bring their own equipment directly yeah. to the job? Yeah, they all have their own equipment. Okay. Nothing for Okay. Kurt, any questions? I presume the garage is going to be, you know, keeping in context with the house as far as style, color, yep. that kind of Same thing. Same vinyl setting, yep. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, that's that's all I have. Lorraine. So, quick question: Is this a single-family home that has been converted into two units? At one point, yeah, like 30 years ago, they converted it. 30 years ago. Yeah, before me, a long okay. time before me. And we just we made the two-family a lot more spacious. We used the basement. <clears throat> So that's something that would be even, that's like pre-existing, non-conforming? That, that was a qu question that I asked Diana originally. And I think we said the house was constructed in 1968 and it was allowed as a two family at that point. I think it was 1980, but it was allowed as a two family. Like there's applications to the Board of Health for a two family septic yeah. and everything. So however they did it back then, it okay. was allowed. And at one time in the 1960s, probably even going to the 1970s, um, two family homes were allowed in the R40. Oh, okay. Um, mm. If you have any time you want to look at old zoning bylaw provisions, give Frank Spillane a call. Okay. Um, <laughs> the one he and I were looking at was only about 15 pages long. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, The, the space in the garage that would be, quote, unquote, used for storage yeah. would be both for you and the other tenant? And the other tenant, yeah. Would you be dividing that space? No, probably not. It would just be open? Yeah, leave it open. And there's no space whatsoever in the house, nothing in the attic? Um, there is space in the attic, but it's like probably three feet, so mm -hmm. it's like a couple totes worth. And I gather from what I've read and what you've said, there's nothing in the basement anymore. That's now right. living yeah. space. Yeah, we have one closet right now that we are storing all the appliances while, okay. <laughs> while everything's being sanded, so... Okay. Um, is there anybody who either has any questions or wants to be heard in this? Yeah, I have one more question, Bonnie. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Why not build a storage shed for the slumber? Storage shed? Uh, shed. I'd, I'd still like to have my truck and then the tenant's vehicles um, under a roof and insulated. Well, I, I guess what I'm saying is a smaller garage, <clears throat> vehicles, and uh, you know a storage, uh, a, a shed for the lumber. I'm just trying to optimize the space. Okay, nothing further. And we we do have a letter that's dated December thirteenth from Chris Corkery, who lives at 92 Beach Street. I'm going to read it. I'm writing this because I and my attorney, Nicholas Corkery, can't attend this meeting regarding 83 Beach Street project. My attorney was going to write a response letter, but has COVID. My concerns, this building isn't zoned for a 1,200 square foot structure. 925 max, I think, is correct. There is already a huge water problem because we live in a flood zone which we can't afford any extra runoff. I'm a commercial realtor who owns many buildings, and this sounds like it's going to be used that way, one or another. The size of the doors and how many will show a lot. Is this property going to be resold after all the property updates? There are many more concerns I wish to have. My attorney address when his health is better. I respectively ask to have him look at the plans for this project when he would be allowed. Thanks, Chris Corkery. Uh, 92 Beach Street also has the name of uh, Attorney Nicholas Corkery of 868 Turnpike Street in uh, Canton. Um, I spoke with um, Scott Shippey, the building commissioner today, and he's not concerned about the garage doors. They're the same size of any garage doors. There's not, not, nothing excess in the, way of, um, in the way of size. So does anybody have any other questions? I guess the big question I have is why do you need this much space? Yeah, no, I'm just trying to optimize the space. Like, I, I didn't even realize the 625 was the max um, until, obviously, we went through the um, process and they said we got to go through the Board of Appeal. But that's just, you know, what we came up with for rough size of the lot that we have. Mm -hmm. Figured all of the um, setbacks work. Let's make the biggest garage we can. You know? Okay. So, unless anybody has any other questions? I do not. Dave, any other questions? Um, uh, I no. to close the public portion. I move we close the public portion of the meeting. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, we're going to do a roll call vote. So, uh, Dave. Sorry. Oh, oh I'm sorry. No. Whoa. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, I'm not sure how to flag anybody down. Can you tell us who you are? I'm uh, Joseph Bullier. I'm an abutter at uh, 17 Hayden. You know, I, I'm having trouble yeah, hearing this. Yeah, this is hard now. to hear. 17 Hayden. 17 Hayden. And, uh, Joseph Bullier, I'm an abutter at 17 Hayden Drive. Can you try upping the volume? <laughs> I, I, I have. I, I actually, I could hear the other gentleman perfectly clear. I think okay. in the room there might be a volume issue. Now, now we can hear you. So who are you and where are you from? Sure. Joseph Bollier, I'm the abutter at 17 Hayden Drive. So we're just to the Hayden? back mm -hmm. uh, of the property. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, so got a, a bit of concern, I think, has been voiced by a few folks regarding uh, the nature of the use uh, for the proposed structure, concern over the size, and uh, um, the applicant's uh, you know, stated business, right, is really flipping house, uh, lots of wood, lots of furniture, lots of improvements, um, runs a, uh, what effectively amounts to a construction crew of, of contractors, right, that uh, may be on and off of the property, uh, working out of such a structure, and, um, you know, really following uh, approval of a structure of this size, is there anything that really prevents that use of all of a sudden us living in what amounts to a, uh, um, you know, a bit of a home flipping business really in our backyard, as opposed to, you know, I think you said you flipped five houses in the last uh, little bit here. Uh, that's, that's a decent amount of volume, right? Not really a hobby. Um, and I guess there's just a bit of concern given the, you know, overall size and nature of kind of the neighborhood, right? It's not a uh, industrial neighborhood at all. And saws, woodworking equipment, trucks, et cetera, make uh, quite a bit of noise. And also have some concerns. And, and these are also from the neighbors to the side of me who unfortunately weren't able to, uh, to make it as well, uh, the Cameos. But, um, you know, there's also a good amount of land uh, on the far side of the garage structure that has also been cleared uh, straight to the property line. Um, I think actually every tree on the property has pretty much been taken down at this point. Uh, but, you know, our concern is that might be used to store additional, um, you know, construction equipment, et cetera, um, you know, based on the applicant's, uh, you, know, you know, business and the fact that, uh, you know, storing a large amount of wood and everything else on the property and you know, just, just a lot of concern over the intended use. Well, let me answer at least part of your concern. So when we, well, first of all, any garage that exceeds 625 square feet as far as its footprint requires a special permit from this board. Mm -hmm. And when we do approve requests of that nature, amongst the conditions that we impose are prohibitions as far as the garage being utilized for any business purpose. Uh, prohibitions against it being used for any uh, residential purpose. So right there, there's a condition imposed that would address, you know, your concern. Now, obviously, if somebody were to, notwithstanding those conditions, utilize the property, utilize it as a premises for some business purpose, and that came to the attention of a neighbor, you would have the opportunity to inform the building commissioner, who's the zoning enforcement officer, and he would then take um, enforcement action. So that there is a mechanism built in when we do render a decision in favor of a garage of this nature to, to address those concerns. Okay, so that's built in, but really on a after the fact basis, uh, so to speak, okay. That, well, not, I wouldn't say it's after the fact because we have to issue a written decision and those conditions yeah. would be within the decision itself. Okay. Those, are, those are largely our concerns. I think I would echo also the flooding and making sure that the flood plan has been drawn up properly because uh, there's a lot of water coming off the hill there that could drive uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, issue into some people's lawns if uh, uh, obviously the land's not graded out properly, but uh, I'm not sure if that falls in here as well. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. a good point that my neighbor at uh, 92 Beach uh, brought up there. Are you directly in back of this property? Uh, directly in back, yeah. Okay. So it, 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 uh, to the back and I'm also to the uh, right as you're facing beach, we have a, uh, a throughway that's about uh, 10 or 15 feet wide running up the side of the property as well. Okay. 
All right, thank you. Um, I think we made the motion. I think we got the second. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Dave, this is the close of the public portion. Yes? No, oh, he muted himself. Yes. Okay, Kim? Yes. And the yes. Um, I just want to bring some things to the board's attention because I went back and looked at other garage decisions that we've rendered, at least during the last six years. Um, in 2020, we approved two. Uh, one was for Longa, 960 square feet footprint. Edessa, 960 square foot uh, footprint. In 2019, how an 868 square foot uh, uh, footprint, O'Keefe 962 footprint. In 2018, Johnson 988, Yucatonas 1080. Um, we denied one in 2017 that was for 960 square feet. Part of that was because of the, the size, part of that was the materials that were being used. Um, we did approve one in 2016 on Main Street for Brooks at 1,500 square feet. And Dave, Kim, and I were the individuals voting on that. Um, however, that was a, almost a two-acre parcel of property. The garage was located fairly far back from the street, so it was fairly unobtrusive um, from the street, or would be unobtrusive from the street, I don't think the garage was ever built. Um, also, we've got a garage here that's being proposed with a 1,200 square foot footprint. The footprint of the existing house is 1,344, so we're only talking 124 foot difference. So my big concern right now is, is size. I would like it to be a little bit lower, but that, that's where I'm standing right now. So, Dave, comments, yes, thoughts, I, questions? That's a very large garage, particularly compared to the, the lot size as well as the size of the existing um, dwelling. So I would say that I would uh, tend to be opposed to it at this point. Kim? And I also would add, you know, and, and this comes to us with op opposition from uh, three abutters. I guess they're all direct abutters, but three three individuals opposed. That's all. Uh, Kim? Uh, I also think this is a little bit large just looking back at you know the numbers that we have approved generally you know 960 962 800 something or other yes there was the 1500 as you mentioned from um 16 but as you said that was on two acres so that mm -hmm. that is a, a different scenario um i am glad that um the bathroom is not an issue that certainly makes mm -hmm. this easier to take a, a look at. Um, and I understand what you're trying to do. I completely understand that. And, um, and when we're talking about any application that comes in front of us, we are looking at the particular application, but we're also looking at this as setting precedent and what sort of a message does this send to right. any future homeowner that you know comes before us. So we're sort of looking at it in two ways at the same time, just so you Yep. understand um, this does seem very large it seems a bit out of proportion with the residents it almost gives the appearance of two houses on the lot right. um, Kurt uh, nothing further just echoing Kim's point it's a it's a it's a large structure uh, compared with the lot and the existing house Ray? I agree with, with uh, all that information. You know, I think Dave's suggest idea of, you know, what about a storage, a separate, um, 
you know, storage section, you know, in a, in a separate building as an option for keeping the wooden there, you know, would be a way to get the garage size down to the more standard size for that area. So we, we got two options, I think. Um, I mean, you heard where our concerns are. We can obviously turn this down. Yeah. Um, if everybody is inclined and you're inclined to come back with a proposal on a smaller structure, we would continue the matter to give you that opportunity. Okay. I, I think from my perspective, you know, again, looking at some of the other ones, you know, anything between 960 and say 990, 990, I think would be 30 by 33. Yeah. Um, anything in that range, I think I would be more inclined to the favor. Um, so that, those are the options. Okay. We can, we can say, if we say no, you're, 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 you're done for two years. Right. If you want, you know, time to Drop reconsider, see if you can come up with something. And, and from my perspective, if you come up with something that is in a 960 to 990, and again, notwithstanding the fact that we do have conditions that we impose, mm -hmm. it's more in keeping with what we've approved in the past. Makes sense. So, thoughts? I agree. I, I would still be concerned about the, um, the storage of the lumbar. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that we can probably address that, you know, through conditions. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can, uh, you know, I certainly will listen to any proposal that he might have, but just uh, beware that I would be concerned about where this lump is going. Yeah, my, my, I think the concern that I would have with the lumber is it gives the appearance of you're running a business from that location. I got you, yeah. So, and again, this is supposed to be a residential garage, not a commercial right. garage. Right. So. Diana, do you have the... Um, I do. I guess we need to take a vote to continue this, right? This is to extend the time within. You must render a decision. Is that the right one? Yeah, what's the case number? You have it. Uh, 17? Yeah. And what what would be the January would January, January 19th. be an, uh, enough time for you? Do you yep, think? That'll work. 19th. Yep, January 19th, 2023. And what would be the February date? February is one, two, three. February 16th. So what I'd like you to do, if you could sign this, and this would again be to continue the matter to the January date. And then we would extend to February, February date, the day in which we have to reach a decision. Okay. okay. We have a motion to continue to January 19th. I move that we continue the application until January 19th. Dave? Second. Okay. Um, Kim? Yes. Dave? Yes. And me, yes. So we'll see you on the 19th. And, and again, um, because it's going to be showing, ideally, a smaller garage, we'll need a certified plot plan you know, to show that as well, okay? Yep. As well as whatever, you know, other uh, plans you're going to come up with to, to show the construction of the garage itself. Right. Okay? Yep. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Barney, can you mention that no, um, another notice won't go out? Yep. Okay, so just no January 9th. Yeah. yeah. For the neighbor guy that was on Zoom, too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. DiNapoli? Good evening. How are you? So you want to screen in your porch? Yes. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? Okay. Basically, we have a, um, a deck on the back of our home at 4 Carey Lane. I don't know if you have the pictures, but uh, 
Mm -hmm. We wanted to add a, simply a, not an all season room, just a three season screened in porch, aluminum, all aluminum to match the existing white of the house. As part of our uh, HOA uh, covenants, we have to, uh, me as trustee for the association, has to have the votes of 10 people. We did receive those votes. We received 13 positive, none opposed. And the next step was to come before the ZBA with the proposal. I've uh, also submitted, I don't know what Diane, I don't know what you gave them, but I also submitted a plan mm -hmm. of the, uh, the design and can answer any other questions you may have. So just to bring it to the board's attention, um, sections K1 and M2 of the comprehensive permit decision that we issued in 2015 prohibit any alteration, reconstruction, extension, or change to any residential unit that's constructed under authority of that permit unless authorized by the ZBA pursuant to the provisions of 760 CMR 56.0511. At our meeting on December 16, 2021, we approved amendments to the Wyman Village um, covenants that provided a protocol for changes to the exterior of residential units. That would include any solar panels that a resident wanted to put on Correct. his or her house, any um, enclosure of the decks, right. and any other um, exterior alterations. Um, those protocols required, as Mr. DiNapoli indicated, um, first approval by the trustees, Correct. and then to come to us um, for approval in accordance with the, um, the, the state regulations relative to comp comprehensive permits. And what we need to determine is whether the changes that are being proposed are substantial or insubstantial. And as you may recall, we've done that in the past relative to, um, to fencing at the, um, the Highland, Highland Ridge development. This is the first time anybody's come you know, before us relative to um, screening in a deck. But we've um, determined, again, in other matters that um, uh, changes that have been proposed are are insubstantial. So we had the same issue to decide, you know, today whether the change that's being requested is substantial or insubstantial. If we determine that it's substantial, we have to have a public hearing on the matter. Okay. If we determine that it's insubstantial, we'll just write up a short decision, and you would be free to then proceed with the um, the building commissioner. Okay. So any questions that anybody has? Yeah. I don't have any. Dave, any questions? Yeah, how many how many units are there at the Wyman Village? Twenty. Twenty. So, I think in theory, um, you know, many other uh, homeowners could also request the same um, sort of modification. And I wonder how that would look. I, I really think this is a substantial. Um, change request so we can hear what the abutters have to say there are quite a few abutters if i remember right about this sort of uh development or change let, actually yes. let me ask mr denapoli a question not not every home in that development has a deck correct uh, everyone has a deck some are above ground some are on ground okay yours again is above ground Mine is above ground okay um, the majority are above ground. The majority are above ground? Okay. Dave, do you want to say anything further? Or? No, I, I just think, uh, you know, the public should have a chance to be heard on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure how I would feel about it if I was in a butter. Uh, you know, one is one thing, but, you know, many of them is going to change the whole appearance of the uh, place. And I don't know if it's for the better or not, but uh, it definitely will change what it looks like back there. And, you know, people who uh, judge uh, a lot of, of, you know, how they feel about uh, property next to them by what it looks like. Can I, can I respond to that? Yeah, of course. Yes. 
Um, as I mentioned before, 13 people voted in favor. All 20 residents got a copy of the proposal, including the plans you see mm -hmm. that were submitted. There were three abutters immediately around my property. Mm -hmm. All those three voted in favor. The only people that can see my unit voted in favor. So, every, I, you know, if you talk about bringing it in front of the, the group, I'm sure they would vote in favor of it once again. But I, that's just speculation. Mm -hmm. Why did the abutters get the vote on this? It's a requirement of the procedure that, that Mr. Ovitt mentioned that was approved last uh, December. It required, I'm the trustee for the complex. The, um, the trustee needed to get 10 positive votes in order to move forward. Another resident can do that without getting the 10 positive votes. Another resident would have to get my approval and then it would come to the ZBA. Dave, the um, protocols that were put in place a year ago um, amended both the covenants and the declaration of trust, and they're almost identical, yeah. the provisions. And, and again, what they require was, or what they do require is that there be a favorable vote of the trustees and then yeah. a favorable vote you know, from the uh, ZBA. Um, and as Mr. DiNapoli indicated, all the trustees have been contacted. Yes. All, of the, all the residents have been contacted. That's correct. And they've received the requisite number of votes to authorize him really to, to do what he wants, but he has to go to us first, you know, be, before he can actually construct anything. So he's followed the protocol in accordance with the requisite documents of the uh, Wyman Village uh, Condominium Association, or Homeowners Association, I guess it would be. Homeowners Trust. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I, I'm not trying to belabor it. I'm just, you know, just thinking about, uh, you know, here's one. What if there's more and more, and and then how how does it look down the road? More and more of the same kind of approval. I mean, technically, technically they can. if one of his neighbors wants to do the same thing, it would be before us if the trustees would be voting in favor of it. Exactly. So each individual homeowner who was requesting to either put a solar panel up or to enclose a deck or a patio would need to obtain the approval internally and then come before us to determine whether that request is substantial or insubstantial. Yeah. Well, like I say, I, I don't want to stand in the way of it. Uh, so if that's the uh, of the other two, I'm, I'm on board. Okay. Kim, any questions? No. Lorraine? No. No. So I guess the motion would be, from my perspective, um, I, I view this as insubstantial. The change that's being requested is insubstantial. So I think the um, motion would be to um, make a determination that, the, that Mr. DiNapoli's request is ins insubstantial. And if we vote in favor of that, then he would need to uh, to follow through with the building commissioner. Sure. You have to close the hearing. No, it's not a hearing. It's not a public hearing. It's not, I'm sorry. So I move to uh, make the determination that the request is insubstantial. Dave, do you want to second that? I'd rather you do it. I'm sorry. I'd rather you do it. Okay. I'll I'll second that motion. Okay, all in favor? I got to do a roll call. Um, Kim? Yes. Uh, Barney? Yes. Dave? Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and I'll probably do it tomorrow, is draft a short decision. Okay. Um, we'll sign it. Uh, you'll have to file in the Registry of Deeds because you're modifying the uh, comprehensive permit. Okay. Um, we should be able to get that to you sometime. I would think within the next uh, week, certainly before Christmas. Okay. Okay? Perfect. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do we want to take a few minutes break or what? You can do the minutes. Minutes. I'm sorry. Um, anybody have any questions on minutes from November 17? Mm -hmm. They look good. Okay. A motion? I move we accept the minutes. Second. Second. Okay. Um, Kim? Yes. Dave? Yes. Kurt? Yes. Lorraine? Yes. And me, yes. 
Okay, do we want to take a few minutes? Yep. Yes. Great. Okay, why don't we take um, five minutes and then we'll start the next matter.